This story is called Hello Grandma Over. The house is empty. I'm 12 years old reclining in my parents' oversized pea soup green bean bag chair. The kind of heavy material that can survive two brothers, occasional horse wrestling, but right now it's all mine. One hand casually strokes a zigzag pattern into the fabric, while the other hand props up the album cover of Steve Martin's Let's Get Small. I'm wearing my dad's hi-fi stereo headphones, big enough to cover most adult size ears. They weigh a ton, and right now I'm, I'm completely lost in the ramblings of track one, The Ramblin' Man. Ramblin', ramblin', ramblin'. Ramblin' Man, you got it. My dad had a great stereo system, no doubt about it. But it was his collection of comedy albums, Carlin, Cosby, Newhart, Williams, Steve Martin, that inspired my love of comedy. And right at that moment, Steve Martin was inspiring me to make a phone call. I grabbed the 1980s novelty phone off the coffee table. It's in the shape of an airplane, so where the phone receiver is the wing, and then the rotary dial is the propeller, if we remember rotary dials. So I pick up the phone, start dialing. I look oh, down at my phone book. Fuck, hang up, do it again. You know how that goes. A moment of silence, a few clicks, a response from the other end of the line. Hello, this is California Relay Operator 279. Go ahead. Hi, I'm calling 805-499-9992, please. The operator dials. It connects. Hi, Grandma. It's Lauren. Over. <laughs> oh, Lauren, you are so wonderful. It is so nice to hear from you. How are you? Over? <laughs> I'm doing good, Grandma. I started taking driving lessons. Over? <laughs> so my grandmother was hard of hearing. So I call a special TTY operator, relay operator, who would stay on the line, typing out everything I was saying. My grandma would read this transcription using a small device that sat on her desk the size of a digital label maker. She'd then pick up the phone to talk back to me. I am so excited that you'll be driving soon and then you can visit me more often. <laughs> Over. That's how the conversations would go. Speak, finish your thoughts by saying, Over. Pause every so often to hear the clacking of the relay operator trying to catch up to my little 13-year-old high, you know, high-speed voice. And then silence while I waited for the computerized conversation to reach grandma's house. Of course I'll come visit you, Grandma. Then you can take me out to a fancy lunch. Over. That's my Grandma Lottie I'm talking to, born January 4th, 1916, Brooklyn, New York. That's how I know New York from my grandmother. Four foot ten, or almost five feet if you count her luxurious quaff of pure white hair. She went to Pratt Institute of Design in New York, was a couture designer and original pattern maker for some of the top fashion lines of her day, including Adrian of Beverly Hills. I am told this was a huge deal. Some of the ladies she dressed include Joan Crawford, Ava Gardner, Lana Turner, Loretta Young. Maybe you've heard a few of those. A fancy lunch. <laughs> I don't specifically remember trying to make my grandmother laugh. But every once in a while, I'd say something funny that would elicit the most wonderful and endearing response a grandchild could ever hear. Oh, Lauren, you are so funny. <laughs> Over. <laughs> so these phone calls were everything to me. There was nothing else in the world I'd rather be doing than to make my grandmother laugh. In fact, I got so good at it that one time I heard a chuckle coming from the other end of the line. It was not my grandmother. It was the relay operator. And all I could think of is that moment, I doubled my audience. <laughs> At age 13, Grandma Lottie was there when I gave my bar mitzvah speech in front of a congregation of 40 or 50 people. This looks very much like the congregation at my bar mitzvah when I was 13 years old. Uh, here's, here's how it went. While most people get life lessons from their parents on things like 
how to change a flat tire, or how do you cook an egg? When a Jewish boy or girl becomes a Jewish man or woman, we are given life lessons on things like kvetching, dry heaving, and various other vocal ailments. <laughs> Over the din of the audience laughter, I waited for the familiar. <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful. At age 29, years later, in front of an even larger crowd, of a couple of hundred, I gave the best man's speech at my brother's wedding. And at one point, we broke out into an improvised grandma-grandson phone conversation with my brother, because he knew this whole game, too. Congratulations on getting married, Greg. Over. Well, thanks, younger brother Lon. Over. And then we laughed, of course. And then, of course, grandma loved it, because we heard from the back of the room, ah, ha, ha, ha. you two are so funny. <laughs> so those phone calls... And those moments hearing my grandmother laugh still bring joy to my heart and remind me why I love to make people laugh today. Over. <laughs> Thank you.